My name's Dan Tucson. I work for Natural England as a farm advisor, and this film's about our Stour Valley to Stone Street Nature Recovery Network, uh, working with farms over long time scales to build a new landscape of species rich grasslands. So we're standing here on the western end of the project area and beneath us we've got the Stour Valley and the escarpment of the Downs and this, the whole project area sort of extends way back into that landscape. Uh, and this is a typical field where we're doing this one-to-one sort of -to -one work with farmers, reverting arable land back to these uh, flower-rich grasslands. This has been sown with a wild flower mix but we've also got harvested um, species that have, been, that have been sown in as well. And things like wild marjoram, wild thyme and devil's bit scabious are now beginning to build and diversify this field. So moving across the River Stour, we come into these valley systems and all the same sort of work going on here, working with farms, connecting these areas of grass and up. And this is a really good example of natural regeneration. So arable land that's come out of cropping and has been allowed to develop over 30 years um, just through allowing species to colonise in naturally. Dropping down into this next valley system, we've got exactly the same sort of thing going on here. Long-term arable reversion, came out of arable cropping in the 1990s and now a really well-developed, species-rich plant community. A lot of flowers here in the sward, a lot of tall grass as well and that's really important for species known as black vein moth and that's a rare species in the country and that's now colonised this, this whole area and it just shows how one-to-one -one working with farmers over long time scales can deliver for species recovery. As we move further up into these valley systems, we've got exactly the same sort of work going on, focusing on arable reversion, getting this species diversity into them so that the whole landscape becomes connected. This is an example of how some of these wildflower grasses are managed. Uh, those that aren't hay cut, for example, can often be browsed down by cattle, sheep and horses. These are conic horses grazing off this big wildflower grassland um, at the end of the season. So we've come down now into this next valley system from where we were before um, and still heading in the general sort of Stone Street area and this is a similar valley system in the sense that we've got the same sort of uh, variety of habitat creation techniques going on. We're standing in a meadow here that was created three or four years ago, sown to a wildflower seed mixture, uh, yellow rattle that we've seen elsewhere, bursa trefoil, common knapweed um, and this is sort of three or four years old now and then beneath us here we've got this big sweep of grass and sort of come from arable land and are developing uh, under their own steam, if you like, through sort of natural colonisation. And then below us here, uh, another example of these extra sort of supplementary bits that we use to just fill, um, fill, fill the gaps, if you like. Um, and this is an area of legume herbal lay, um, just to help increase that sort of insect diversity and insect abundance.
So what we're doing today is we're taking flower rich hay from this uh, species rich bank, uh, working with the Wildlife Trust and their volunteers who have helped us to cut it, rake it and bag it up and then it's all been taken now to a, a nearby site that's a reversion area where we're going to spread the hay and in time hopefully those flowers and seeds will colonise. So this is the bank that we're spreading all that wildflower hay on. This was actually sown to a wildflower mixture last year, so you see things like wild carrot coming through, but what that hay will do is diversify the amount of plants and the range of plants that will colonise the bank. Moving into the next door field, we're in a, another arable reversion area and this has been seeded with a wildflower mixture about eight years ago. Uh, similar range of species, but also here we're now we've got species like kidney vetch, which is colonising, which is really good, obviously, for the small blue butterfly, which is just next door.